Hey, everybody. Welcome to using UE4 to plan and execute choreographed performances. My name is Lawrence Jones. I'm the executive creative director of a company called Sequin AR. A little bit about Sequin AR. We create new formats, existing formats, and live event experiences for broadcast television. By new formats, I mean we partner with production companies, talent, and networks to conceive, develop, design, and execute live AR shows. With the help of evolving tech like UE4, limitations from the past have now gone away from making this possible and now making revenue opportunities in Hollywood. Existing formats, we help producers and production companies enhance their existing formats by using AR to tell new stories. Shows are trying to stay relevant, and we're seeing trending elements in this space such as AR immersive explainers, AR set extensions, and AR war tables to name a few. And live event experiences, we work with musicians, sporting events, promoters, and esports companies to make their live events pop in AR. Our job is to help these performers go viral and keep the conversation going. So here are some examples of high-profile AR projects the members of Sequin AR were heavily involved in at previous companies. You might recognize the Weather Channel Storm Surge had a billion views worldwide and took home a gold BDA award. Super Bowl AR Open this year was nominated for a sports Emmy and now a broadcast tech award. We worked with Injustice and Street Fighter, Turner, League of Legends, World's Opening Ceremonies. You might have seen that. And finally, the Weather Channel's Tornado, which last week just got nominated for an Emmy as well. So we're really proud of the previous work. So now, one of the first projects we took on at Sequin was for an artist named Madonna. You may have heard of her. We are proud to have heard this week that it, too, was nominated for a Broadcast Tech Award. So uh, going back a little bit, I want to discuss a couple, uh, one key thought that we all have here at, at Sequin. It's that, you know, there are two buckets of AR in our world, you know, uh, two experiences, two major buckets. One's linear story driven by narrative, usually by music or script, and there are interactive ones driven by, say, a live read from a talent that has unknown pacing and needs the ability to trigger sections of AR when needed. An example of that interactive kind would be the storm surge we discussed a minute ago. Uh, other examples of linear would be Super Bowl the Open, the League of Legends Open, and now this Madonna project, which is completely driven by music. So the time code of the music bed drives everything in the performance, including monitor content, projectors, practical lights, etc. So it is imperative that it drives our AR renderers as well. So let's talk about the creative brief. Five Madonnas on stage at once. We were asked to put uh, five Madonnas on stage at once, including four that were digital personas of herself. The bride, the playful, musician, and spy. These will be choreographed with multiple performers. Super tight choreography had to be designed as not to give away any tech limitations of the AR. Madonna had the best choreographers in the business uh, working on this, and it was great seeing them so passionate about this project. The personas need to interact with stage pieces. There were shiny floors, uh, both center stage and stage left, small cocktail tables, and a satellite stage that was small and had its own set of limitations so that we couldn't have the reflections tr uh, clipped by the small uh, size of that stage. Um, so we had three AR-enabled cameras. In our world, any live camera that needs to have AR incorporated needs, to, needs what's called telemetry. For this piece, we enabled three cameras, the front of the house, the wireless steady cam, the jib crane. And Justin will go more into this in a minute. Multiple environmental set extensions were, requir uh, were required by Jamie King, the creative director of Madonna. And he wanted to extract the places represented in the song Medellin and incorporate these environments into the practical stage set. Festoon lights, clouds, foliage, set extensions are all examples of what was created. Jamie also asked for fireworks, rain, butterflies, and clouds to bring more organic beauty and life to the piece. And finally, dynamic transitions were incorporated as a way to reveal and hide these holograms as the media coined them. Niagara particle effects was used heavily uh, for things such as gold dust and uh, blurry effects. So as with any groundbreaking television project, it takes many teams and people to, to successfully accomplish it. Dick Clark Productions was our client uh, along with Madonna, and we worked side by side with Dick Clark on integrating and technically and operationally with their BBMA show. They were incredibly hospitable and open to breaking new ground with us. To mention, their volumetric capture studio in London uh, was where the personas were acquired. 
Uh, we'll discuss th that more in a bit too. Octurus. These guys are in LA and were asked to task with VMC cleanup, task automation, and playout optimization. I'll also go deeper into that in a second. Reflector. This studio is in Montreal and in charge of asset creation from the set pieces to animation. Brainstorm 3D. Justin will go more about uh, into detail with them, but they are a real-time broadcast graphic software from Spain, and we chose them to be the UE4 broadcast layer for this project. And finally, Stipe. They handle the camera, camera telemetry. Uh, it's a complex field, and these guys from Croatia made sure that the tracking was locked on from all cameras simultaneously. So main challenge number one. This AR experience needed to be so perfectly executed from multiple cameras at specific times and at exactly in the right real world spaces and live performers and dancers need to interact with it. So planning was essential. Challenge two, it was specifically that we, didn't, we had the choreography already planned and given to us by Madonna's creative team when we started this project. So we need to help them figure out how to design shots that can physically work and be impactful. Here's a clip, it's a little stuttery, sorry. It's a clip of the original rehearsal that was given to us where the dancers of Madonna were used in, uh, as placeholders for the stand-ins. I'm sorry, stand-ins for the actual personas. So the solution for this, much like all of us here, is the Unreal Engine. We create a UE4 planning pipeline. So the amazing thing about working with UE4 as a real-time renderer in this world is that there are tremendous efficiencies for us since we can create fully CG pre environments that can then over time evolve as the final product without moving to another software. Essentially, in the end, removing the CG stand-ins and replacing them with the live practical elements version of themselves. For example, we can then hide the CG stage and replace it with the real stage through the eyes of the camera. So here you'll actually see a tech viz that we created for the director to see in order to get really cool shots at the lensing that they had provided with us, they're going to provide for the broadcast, this shows how far we can go and how wide without the steady cam guy falling off the stage. So unlike film where you have pre to envision the creative, tech viz to plan out how you'll execute, through the short timelines in our world, we create the tech viz and use that to come up with the creative within the boundaries of what is possible. So now that we have a good idea of what the personas are doing in potential shot design, we're then ready to acquire the Madonna digital personas. Volumetric capture, also referred to as 3D video, can be 3D point cloud data, or in this case, a 3D sequence of mesh meshes. This video that contains temporal and spatial data is derived from many video cameras shooting synchronously, and after cleanup and some special attention, these assets are created. As mentioned, Dimension Studios in London was a capture company. The team's went there and shot many different takes with Madonna. Decision lists were then created by Jamie and Carla, the creative directors of Madonna, based off the 2D video, where then the data from all cameras were then processed by Dimension and sent to Arcturus for data cleaning, fixing, and optimization. So those assets were then sent to us, where we would then replace our persona stand-ins in our previs with VMCs, as well as the performers with live action reference material from second rehearsal. The footage was keyed, stabilized, and placed on cards. We would hold many sessions with the client to tweak the choreography and shot design with the help of UE4 Sequencer. And so Sequencer was imperative for this project. I spent much time in there, and without it, we would not have been able to finish this project. So while this, while this process was happening, the team such as Reflector would be iterating the other AR elements based on the client's feedback, continually working on the models, textures, transitions, particles, sims, and animations. This was happening all the way days before the performance. And as you notice, we call this section live viz. We don't have pre viz, we don't have post viz. We go directly to tech viz, and at a certain point, do a handoff to, to live viz, because this is what will be seen on TV with lots of iterations up to that point. And here you saw, there was, uh, this is our first uh, tech viz that we swapped out the, um, the VMCs for the stand-ins. Here's, uh, in this image, you can see where we replaced the static mesh of Maluma uh, with a keyed card from his live stand-in at second rehearsals. So without further ado, up next I'd like to talk, we'd like to bring up Justin Labrad, our VP of Engineering, who'll, who'll go into a deeper tech dive for all y'all. Nice. Hello everyone. So on-site planning, in addition to the previous, much of the work 
is pre-planning execution at the event itself. Pre-production's half the battle for us. We work closely with Dick Clark Productions on setting up times where we can rehearse and planning technical setup around them. We have a very condensed timeline and limited opportunities for technical testing and execution before we have to go live. We also don't really have the luxury of re being able to reshoot anything a day late or even a few hours late. In the world of live broadcasts, we, we don't get in the way and impact production minimally. There were several other performers' rehearsals aside from Madonna we had to account for, and only were able to get the full staff at a few time periods before going live. Each rehearsal we had to treat as if it were live because of the limited time. The broadcast has many moving parts and can be a challenging environment. For example, imagine as an Unreal Engine technical artist, you have your normal, to do your normal J job, blueprinting, creating content. However, your owner's crammed into a small production truck with tons of people on top of you all day. So for camera telemetry, our, tree, our three live augmented reality cameras required camera tracking technology. For this project, we chose Stipe camera tracking. Our three cameras were a steady cam for up on the stage, a jib camera as pictured here, and a further back pedestal camera. Stipe kit was used for the jib, which has sensors installed on all the pivot points of the jib itself, relaying the movements of the jibs to the tracking unit and sending out the final telemetry to the Unreal render engine. Our pedestal camera used a hardware head, which would track the pan, tilt, and zoom of the camera. The telemetry systems themselves would handle the unification of the individual coordinate, relative coordinate systems of each of the cameras and relate it into one unified coordinate system inside Unreal Engine itself. For our steady cam, we used Stipe Red Spy. This is an infrared camera that tracks small reflective stickers that can be placed on the ceiling or the floor. Ahead of time, a map of the sticker location is created, which allows us to know exactly where the camera is inside that space. Generally, you can put the reflective stickers on the floor or the ceiling. In many studios, they're generally on the ceiling. But for on-air stage performances, we tend to prefer them on the floor of the stage for easier setup. Um, and this picture is showing the Stipe Red Spy unit mounted on the camera, kind of pointed downward. Once the previs is planned, we can then begin determining where the reflective tracking stickers are to be placed on the stage. For the Steadicam operator, we need them to be on the front and side areas of the stage. Generally, we blanket the stage with stickers farther outside the range to give the camera operator some flexibility in their moves. There's usually a great variation in the surfaces, and some hold the stickers better than others. And even though we'll try to determine ahead of time, there are always surprises with the surfaces we're trying to put the stickers on. A big concern early on was the large number of performers and rehearsals that were going to be on stage performing after we've calibrated all of our cameras. There were a dozen or so performers rehearsing two to three times over the course of a few days before the event. For example, Taylor Swift had an entire band using areas we had already calibrated, and recalibrating or remapping the area each day wasn't an option because of the tight schedule. So we explored several options, including a Marley floor that could be rolled up and stored when Madonna was rehearsing or performing. Our concern with that is that the stickers may fall off from the constant rolling and unrolling. So we set up our test area inside our studio and started laying down stickers. And fortunately, after testing this in our studio, we found they were extremely resilient to foot traffic, even after we were intentionally trying to remove them with our feet. Lots of help was required, but once we had the plan ready, we were able to enlist a lot of help from the Dick Clark Productions and put down about 2,000 stickers in less than an hour. Silver Draft has been a great partner for our PCs. We use our, both our studio and on-site events. We generally try to go with the latest processor and NVIDIA cards at the time. For this particular process, um, project, a fast SSD was important because we were trying to stream four volumetric capture videos at the same time, and caching the entire performance ahead of time in RAM wasn't an option. Unreal Engine is not fully ready for live broadca AR broadcast out of the box yet. In the past year, the base functionality required for live broadcast has been slowly being implemented into Unreal Engine. And we expect a lot more steady progress on that in the next year. Uh, so some of the things we need for Unreal Engine for live broadcast are HD video input output, the ability to composite the AR with the clean camera, shadow reflection catchers on uh, invisible geometry in the scene, and control of the application, uh, control of all the renderers from an interface that we can uh, use in the con production control room. So for this project, we chose Brainstorm for the broad what we call the broadcast layer for Unreal. Uh, Brainstorm has been around for a long time in the real-time virtual set space and currently has an Unreal Engine integration with their product, Infinity Set. 
We chose Brainstorm over some of their competitors because they had already integrated external control of time code into their Infinity Set software, which we really needed for this project, and had their software running on UE4 4.22, which was the latest at the time. Uh, they have a Python-based user interface, which is very flexible and allows you to build and create, uh, even do programming on the fly, fast user interfaces that we can use uh, to on site. And having an external application for saving, loading at Unreal Engine actor presets, such as transforms properties, and can call blueprint functions is extremely important for our live broadcast world. We can't really spend a lot of time bouncing back and forth between Unreal Engine Editor and running Unreal Engine in game mode, which we run for performance reasons. There are many on-site creative changes happening when we need to make adjustments and save those. And it's a great time saver to manage that in an external application. The ability to do all this while controlling and connecting to multiple renders at once is also a must. Based on everything I just talked about here, this is a little bit of a system overview of how we actually plug into the broadcast on site. We used just one Unreal Engine 4 and camera tracking system per camera, so all viewpoints are available to the director at all times. Camera tracking data gets distributed over the network at 59.94 frames a second. We then composite in Unreal Engine the, uh, the Unreal Engine output with the camera video inside Infinity Set, and the resulting output comes out our Aja Kona 4 cards into the video switcher for the broadcast for the directors. Our Infinity Set Control PC is separate from our render engine and serves as the orchestrator for any events and actions that need to occur during playout. Our time code comes from a Master Pro Tools audio track. This is the same audio track that feeds time code to other lights and monitors inside the arena. So our sequences are set to go based on that. When we're ready to go live, we're actually hands off everything and let the, ti uh, the production trigger the time code, which is going to trigger all the sequences. At Sequin, we're currently developing tools to make our live productions easier and require less development. Our first application is called simply Timecode, and it's an external application with a companion UE4 plugin that consumes Timecode over a computer's audio port or other LTC devices and allows you to set up triggers and events and control Unreal Engine for live broadcast AR performances. Uh, producer tools is another area we're working in. There's a huge need for on-site producers to see the final output anywhere in the event and make suggest changes and placements for virtual objects and AR characters. We then need the ability to take these easily and quickly back into our actual live production Unreal Engine sequence. So imagine a situation where Madonna is actually looking at Unreal Engine on a tablet, making her quick changes to things where she wants things to be, and we can actually take those in quickly. Thanks for attending. Please come talk to us after the presentation and follow Sequin on Twitter and LinkedIn to see projects we are working on next. Thank you.